Time for a trip to the cinema. I'm going to see Civil War, the new film by Alex Garland. See the trailer? It looks like a big gung-ho action film in the good old Hollywood style. Let's go and have some fun. Well, uh, that was Civil War. Uh, this is directed, as I mentioned, directed and written by Alex Garland. He's one of our more interesting filmmakers these days. He, his films are slightly left of centre, slightly weird, very imaginative. You'll remember him, of course, as a scriptwriter on things like 28 Days Later and uh, The Beach. He is moved into directing in more recent years with very memorable films like Ex Machina, one of the most intelligent AI science fiction films of the current era. Um, the baffling and bizarre but captivating Annihilation. And then he did a film called Men, starring Rory Kinnear a couple of years ago, which was both divisive and occasionally repellent. He's recently, in the publicity drive for this new film, Civil War, indicated that he has no plans to direct any more films, which I think would be a shame because he's a visionary. He's a true auteur. And I think it's a shame if he just retires to script writing. Undoubtedly, he'll still craft some great story for us. But... His directing style is unique and his vision is unique and certainly this particular film is like nothing I've really seen before. Word of warning to anybody thinking of going to see this film, if you're feeling a bit down, if you're feeling of a depressive nature, if you're of a nervous disposition, it's a film you need to think twice about going to see. It's a war film, so yes, it's, the chances are it's going to be tough. But I wasn't necessarily expecting a film quite as bleak and nihilistic as this. I'd seen the trailers and it, it, it looked difficult. But it is very, very much a superb film. But it's very challenging and very dark. There's not much light and shade. There's not much hope. The story basically is that we're set in a dystopian future America, which could be tomorrow, where various political factions have split the country apart and the country is basically a war zone. And what we have here is effectively a dystopian road movie about four characters who are journalists, photojournalists, who are tracking the development of the war as the country splits apart. The president, played briefly by Nick Offerman, is under siege in the White House. He's trying to bring things under control. What's interesting is that we're never really told exactly what's caused this civil war to, to happen. There's suggestions that there are racial tensions, there's suggestions that there are various political and social tensions that have caused this. But it's not pinpointed to one particular cause, it's just presumably decades of unrest and disharmony have finally exploded and the country is tearing itself apart. I don't know if you ever watch reports on the news from war zones like the Ukraine or the Middle East or wherever else wars are springing up these days. And you often see journalists, British journalists like Jeremy Bowen, K. Dady back in the day, a lot of the journalists who, who were right in the middle of the action and they've got these flat jackets with press on them, BBC press. And I often wonder, does that really make them immune from attack? Are the, um, the, the, the soldiers going to go, whoa, Jeremy Bowen, we can't shoot Jeremy Bowen. I do wonder how safe journalists are in the middle of these situations, but I suppose it's something that goes with the job. This film takes us right into the middle of all this with these four characters who are journalists, photojournalists, who are, as I say there, tracking the progress of the war via photographs, via the medium of photographs. We've got four main characters. We've got Kirsten Dunst. Never been a huge fan of Kirsten Dunst, but she is terrific in this. She plays Lee. She's a sort of a senior journalist. Seen it all before, been there, done that. But she's joined up with the others to make this road trip across America to chronicle the events of the war. Uh, joined by Wagner Moura, as uh, Joel, he's also a sort of a senior journalist and obviously a, a friend of Lee's, and they've done this sort of thing before. Also with him is Stephen McKinley Henderson, a uh, very well-known American character actor. He's playing Sammy. He's a sort of a senior journalist, rather jaded. Again, he's been through all this before, and he's doing this because it's what he does. The fourth member of the team is 
Jessie, played by Kaylee Spaney. You might have seen her recently in the film Priscilla. Uh, she's a very young, 22-year-old photojournalist. She's actually about 14. She wants to make her name in the field and she puts herself in danger and she puts herself out there quite fearlessly. And these four are travelling across America in this beaten-up car with the word press on the side, Travelling across the country in an episodic nature. They're never far from danger. They're in a bit of a battle zone. Even when they're in a town that appears to try and be trying to keep itself outside the war. There are snipers up on the roofs. And there's dangers that are ever present. And you get the impression that travelling along. They're never far away from a bullet smashing through the windscreen. Or causing the car to hurtle off the road. And the film follows their journey across the country. Getting into perilous, heart-stopping situations, the most perilous of which sees them meeting up with a, a little group led by Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons only appears in one scene, but he makes quite an impact. What he does is um, stomach-churning, actually. It's really... I think that's when the film really hits home, because up until this point, it's been a, quite an edgy sort of adventure into the dark heart of a, a disturbed America. But now it becomes seriously... You know, the stakes get really high all of a sudden. The group eventually arrive at Charlottesville where they join up with a military force that's making the final push into Washington, D.C. And this is where the film's budget, which is only $50 million, which is a lot for A24 films. They tend to put out quite low-budget films like Everything Everywhere All at Once, which turn a profit, but they're not one of the big studios. And I think that this film is their attempt to sort of punch up into the big boys and make a big film. And certainly you see that in the last 30, 40 minutes where the attack on Washington takes place. Now, of course, there's presumably a lot of CGI and and visual trickery involved in, in bringing this scene to the screen. But it's very, very tough stuff. It's very visceral. It's very on the nose as the capital of the American nation is under attack. White House itself is under attack. Symbols that aren't necessarily cherished by us but are important in American culture are under attack by military forces. The president is under attack. White House is breached and his special services forces are under attack. It's, it's on the nose. It's on the nose. And that's where the film really explodes into life. Not that it's not been full of life at this stage. It's, it's been a fascinating experience. And it ends quite bleakly, as it's been throughout the whole film. It's a terrific film. It is very close to a masterpiece, I suppose. It's a film, I've been looking at some reviews. Some people have certain issues with it. Some people have issues because it doesn't explain the, the geopolitical background intricately. But it doesn't need to. It's just explaining to you that war is erupted in America. People are fighting one another. You don't really know which side is which, what each side is fighting for. All you need to know is that there's dissent. It's exploded onto the streets of America and the country's falling apart. And this bunch of journalists want to chronicle it. That's basically what it's about. But it's a very dark film. And I've seen a couple of other critics as well say it's the sort of film that you see once. You don't need to see it again. Certainly not immediately. With some films, if they're visual or they particularly captivate you, you're tempted to go back and see it again quite quickly. I've seen this. No desire to see it again because it is a very dark, bleak film. And bleak is a word I keep coming back to. It really is. There's no light and shade here. There's very little humanity peering through the darkness. It's very much about the terrible things people do in conflict to one another. Terrible ways people terrorise each other. And the, the valuelessness of life in some ways. But it's very well done. I mean, Alex Garland is a master storyteller. His, his stories are very edgy. He's not interested in rom-coms. He's certainly not a, a Richard Curtis type. I can't imagine him ever doing that sort of film. His films always have something to say and something quite dark to say. I, don't think, I think he's quite a pessimistic person. But this is a film that will stay with you, whether you want to see it again or not. It, will, it can't help but stay with you because some of the, the visuals and the narrative beats are so powerful. And these four main characters are very well delineated. And even though what they're going through is they're, they're doing a terrible service you do feel for them and you sort of get to know them and you, you like them and you you see their humanity beneath all the inhumanity that's around them it's a great film it's not for everyone as i said if you if you're looking for something uplifting go somewhere else even watch godzilla x kong if you must this is not light this is not life affirming this is not a joyous thing you will not come out of this film feeling better about the world you will feel very downbeat i think and as I said, if you do have a tendency to depression and 
feeling bad about things, honestly, give this a swerve because this won't help your mood. But it's a great film if you've the stomach for it. But it is hard work. It's it's uncompromising. It's a great film. It's Civil War by Alex Garland. It's in your cinemas now. I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it... Oh, I'm going to give it... A nine out of ten. I, I was verging on an eight, eight and a half, but I think it deserves a nine. As I say, I may never watch it again because I've seen it. I know what it's doing. I've I appreciated it, but I don't see that you get a lot from revisiting it other than make yourself feel pissed off again. So watch it if you can. But as I say, that warning is that if you have a nervous disposition, you will not want to go there. Right, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More to come on this channel very, very soon, which means all you need to do is press that subscribe button. Please press the subscribe button. We're sort of, the brakes are on at the moment. It'd be nice to get a few more bodies on board, which is probably not the most appropriate thing to say, having watched Civil War. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. If you've seen Civil War, what did you think of it? If you're going to see Civil War, what are your expectations? Have I put you off? Have I encouraged you to see it let me know what you think i'll be back soon until i am back with some new content keep taking this stuff